Late Late Show. I'm your host, TV's Craig Ferguson. Please sit down, relax. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Stop waving. Stop waving. You at home too. Stop waving. I can see you. I really can see you. Cut that out. But keep doing that. You are dirty. But I like it. It's a great day for America, everybody. Why? Well, let's see. Um, we have modern dentistry. There you are. We have modern dentistry. <laughs> see, when people say they, uh, they'd like to live in another time, oh, I'd like to live in the times of the knights of the round table and stuff. I, I, I th think about it. Dentistry. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to live in medieval times. In medieval times, you went to the de you went to the barbers and they just took your teeth out at the barbers. <laughs> just saying. Anyway, no, I'll tell you why I'm saying I read today archaeologists have just discovered dental tools dating back 9,000 years, apparently. Caves, cavemen had dentists, apparently. 9,000-year-old dental tools. Apparently, certain caves looked like dental offices. <laughs> That's right, they had very, they had very old, old, very old magazines, older even than, I don't know, hairy people magazine, that was it. Neanderthal fitness magazine, that was all it. You'd walk into the receptionist, you know, you know, the dentist cave, the receptionist would be there, would say, first visit, you need to fill out the wall. Uh, apparently, apparently dentists, you know, caveman dentists. And it would be nice because cavemen, uh, speak like they're at the dentist anyway, apparently. You know, they, they speak like we've got the <laughs> thing in their mouth. And, call, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and you would be at, the dentist would also be a caveman, so he'd speak like that too. He wouldn't feel such a fool. He'd be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 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 gingivitis. Hey, hey. Oh yes, this is, there's plenty in dentistry. I'm sure we could go on for hours. No, like, when I was back in the old country, uh, where I grew up, uh, the dentistry hadn't evolved much since the caveman days. <laughs> when I, this is a true story, when I was a kid I did try the, uh, you know, string tied to your tooth, slam the door thing, you know, to, to get a tooth to say, and I slammed the door really hard and the door handle flew off. <laughs> it's true, I was stuck in that room two days! <laughs> with a toothache and a, and, a, and a doorknob hanging from my mouth. And if that was the only time it happened, it would have been fine. I, the reason I did it, I used to be terrified of the dentist. I didn't go for a long, long time. You know, I did, uh, you know, back in the day, I, my dental work was done the old-fashioned way. Bar fights. That's the way to get... I bet you wouldn't hit me right there. No, right there. Right there, would you? Fancy your chances, hot shot? Over there a bit. Yeah, yeah, come on. Unfortunately, in a bar fight, you can't get fillings done. Only uh, extractions. That's all they do. It's about all my HMO would pay for as well right now, I think. There was one time, this is, this is absolutely true, I'm not kidding. I, I had very severe tooth pain, a very bad toothache, and it wouldn't go away. I tried my usual method of dealing with, you know, severe pain, waiting for it to go away, but it wouldn't go away. <laughs> That's what I do. A lot of people, it's like when I wake up in the middle of the night and I have to go to the bathroom and I don't want to get up because I'm in bed. <laughs> and I, 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 maybe it'll just go away. It's not going to go away. Do you know what I mean? It's true, isn't it? Like, hmm. maybe, if I, maybe if I think about something, it's not going away. <laughs> Anyway, I had this toothache, and so I go to the dental school in Glasgow. It's free service, because it's all students, right? And they'll take you right away, because nobody wants to go. <laughs> and you walk in, the receptionist there, it's just the, like a guy with his hat on backwards behind the desk, going, hey, we got one! <laughs> and there's like, you know, you can hear them all, the, the dentist, the de student dentist, waiting in a room nearby. You can hear, do a little dance, <laughs> make a little love, get down and... <laughs> And a, a tube of nitrous oxide pumping into the... <laughs> Talk about feeling no pain. Anyway, they tell, you know, the receptionist, we got one. And the three dental students come out. A kid comes out, you know, he's got tussled hair. He's wearing a toga. No, he's not wearing a toga. 
But he comes out and says, you serious? You want us to work on your teeth? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> I go, yeah, yeah, I got it. And everybody's like, do a little dance. <laughs> so anyway, three students, three dental students, they take me to this dental surgery and they start working on my teeth. I think they were D students. They weren't, they weren't the cream of the crop. <laughs> And one of the guys, like there's three of them, they're all looking in my mouth like, <laughs> like that. I can see their faces are all closed up and everything. And one of the guys is really too excited to be seeing me, you know, going to get my tooth hurt. You know, he's like, he's, he's talking, he's getting me to rub ointment on it, but he said, it rubs a lotion on its skin. <laughs> know what I mean? He's a little too serial killer. It rubs a lotion on its skin. So that one guy's doing that, and there's another girl who looks like she's going to faint, and then the guy who's like got his hat on sideways and looks a little toasted, frankly, and he, he's pulling at my tooth, and the old teacher at the back's going... <laughs> anyway, they get the tooth out, and, uh, you know, it was a bit of pushing and shoving. And then I said, can I keep it? Can I keep the tooth? Because it's my tooth. And uh, it was the era of punk rock, you know, and I wanted the tooth for a nose ring or something, you know. <laughs> And they said, no, you can't keep the tooth. We need it for research. I'm like, all right. I found out later they were using it to make a bong. <laughs> Do a little dance. <laughs> Dentists are crazy. They're crazy. The dental work, whenever you get dental work down, the dentists always try and undersell you on the pain as well. You know, how, how, how much it's going to hurt. They say, well, you might feel a slight twinge here. <laughs> You know it's going to be white hot, you're going to pass out. It's a... I once went to the dentist and the, I was getting a root canal done and the root of my tooth was bent. So the dentist couldn't get it numb. He tried all sorts of ways, he couldn't get it numb. He said, look, this is just going to really hurt like hell. <laughs> I said, all right, all right. He said, it's, only, it's going to be short, it'll be about 30 seconds, but it's really going to hurt. And, and you know what? When a dentist tells you something's really going to hurt, it's really going to hurt. <laughs> That was the longest 30 seconds of my life, I think. No, maybe the time I interviewed Tara Reid. That was the, uh, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can judge me, you weren't there. Talk about pulling teeth. Anyway, the, whoa. Do you know when you... <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I, uh... You know when you go into the dentist's office and they've got pictures of bad teeth, you know, and the, with the warning, you know, the little pamphlet, warn, don't let this happen to you. It's very embarrassing when you recognise your own mouth. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but I do like that they have all kinds of free stuff. You know, they've got all sorts of free things to give away at the dentist, but you're never sure if they're going to give it to you. You know, you have to drop hints. Everything's fine, doctor. Yeah, kids are great. Uh, someone broke into my house, got everything, my toothbrush. They got that. <laughs> <laughs> my sample size toothpaste, the, <laughs> the flush thing. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to replace them. <laughs> and they always give you these really crappy toothbrushes that will break. Really, the little tiny plastic clear things that break, so you have to come back sooner. <laughs> Anyway, so when I, I recently had root canal, I had quite a lot of work I had to get done. You know, I was busy and a lot of reconstruction. And it took a while for me to find the right dentist in California. Now, I love my dentist. He's very dashing. I had to go to a different dentist, but I finally found a great dentist. If you need a great dentist, this is your guy, Dr. Gold, Santa Monica. He's fantastic. He look, I don't want to get your expectations up, but he looks a bit like Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> you know, he's kind of like, let me fix your teeth. And his name is Dr. Gold, that's his real name, Dr. Gold, and it sounds like a Bond villain, I think, is it? It's fantastic. Welcome, I'm Dr. Gold. I drive him crazy every time I go, because I pretend to be James Bond and he's the villain in the chair. It just helps me. When I get into the chair, I think, you have your drill in your hand, Eva, and your evil henchman at your side, Dr. Gold. So you expect me to talk, Dr. Gold? No, Craig, I expect you to shut up while I fix your teeth. <laughs> yes, your evil henchman is trying to kill me. This is not an evil henchman. Her name is Sandy. She's a dental hygienist. <laughs> I, always, 
I actually feel very bad in front of the dental hygienist as well. It's the only time I lie. I always, I just lie straight to the dental hygienist. You know, when they say, you know, have you been flossed? I just lie. It's, it's the only two times I lie to a, de a dental hygienist and uh, and when I'm in a relationship. Other than that. <laughs> Other than, that's why, that's why I can <laughs> I That's why I could never date a lady dentist. <laughs> the lies would, would mash together and cause the truth might happen. Who knows what I have? Worldwide.